we have to do a lot more with a lot less. To this end, we need to focus on the specific detail of the program that the client is undertaking to understand their processes in a lot more detail and also to interrogate the lab standards and international codes that govern the design and construction of laboratories to pare down to the bare minimum in order to achieve the client's requirements. It's imperative that we have a much more detailed understanding of what the research is trying to achieve and also important to make sure that we don't over-design the project by taking the requirements of the codes too literally. It's important that we drill down and understand the essence of what the codes are looking to achieve. One question I often get asked is what is the future of lab design and what is next? We are certain of four key influences a drive for greater yield and functional flexibility, an evolution in process automation and interactive technologies, the ratcheting of regulatory framework, and finally, a reduction in funding for the facilities. The focus on flexibility is moving more towards a flexibility of purpose of the facility rather than a flexibility of the facility over its lifetime. Typically we would see flexibility in a laboratory facility in terms of embedded spare capacity in building services infrastructure. We need to be thinking more about spare spatial provisions which means allowing space in ceiling voids, space in rises and having the appropriate connectivity between those elements to allow the lab to be repurposed in the future. We believe virtual and interactive technologies have the ability to change procedures. The concept of a virtual online laboratory is enabling that laboratory to be used remotely by an external connection. Now to do that, we've done that in the past through technology lab, and that's focused on education. So with engineering and IT, we've been able to access that lab remotely, be able to download software to that particular lab, test it remotely via a camera, see whether their software is working correctly, and then enable that to be used by a multitude of students in a much heavier traffic schedule than would otherwise be allowed by just a physical lab. In the future, we really see that wearable technology will enable students not to be necessarily in the physical environment, but connect remotely, particularly hazardous laboratory environments where students may not be able to enter because of radiation environments or the sort of clinical environment which is very hazardous to human health. And we see that technology really leaping that divide and providing labs that can be provided to a much wider range of students taking that forward to a scientific laboratory is the next step. And we see that really as a fundamental shift into what is possible. A theme that weaves its way through all of these items is sustainability. Laboratories have traditionally been seen as energy intensive. Sustainability within the lab framework is often quite a challenge as the key functions in the laboratories and ensuring the safety of, of the operators within the space often overrode the drive towards more efficient and effective systems within building services. In addition, we have a very advanced BIM and 3D capability, which we use to achieve a very high level of coordination for laboratory projects, which are inherently very complex and also help us to visualise for the client what it is we're offering in our design. We've learnt through the delivery of iconic research facilities that minimising energy is not enough. It's about providing a work environment that addresses staff retention and wellbeing. It's about accommodating the expectations of leading researchers and it's also about minimising the impact on the immediate surroundings of the building. We believe the success of future lab facilities will be dependent on the integration of these key sustainability initiatives coupled with flexibility and functionality. In the clinical environment we see a major step forward in laboratories is the ability to fully automate them. So that's removing a human out of the equation, particularly in the PC3 type laboratories where there are a lot of hazardous elements, a lot of risk to human health. If we can fully automate these to enable processing remotely and in remote locations, 
through the advent of technology, we see that as a major step forward. We're currently working on a couple of key initiatives around some very hazardous uh, elements in a clinical space, uh, and we hope to release that to the wider market.